You're watching another Nerd Stalker interview. Good morning. Welcome to another Nerd Stalker interview. This is Greg Gloria, aka Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network. Uh, we're continuing our Kickstarter Unbox series here in uh, a segment where we're highlighting existing and uh, you know post Kickstarter entrepreneurs and just discuss some of their stories. Uh, today I'm pleased to follow up and talk with uh, David Hunt of Spore Chargers. Uh, I talked with his partner Jason Brown who may join us a little later by the way um, and they're live from Philadelphia so uh, uh, here on Google Plus Hangouts. So we caught up with Jason last week before they closed their campaign as I mentioned earlier and they were about at 82 percent uh, with five days to go so we pushed the interview out and uh, they just recently closed their Kickstarter uh, earlier this week and reached over 112 percent of their goal which was great um, so to recap again uh, sport chargers uh, in, in, in my in the the nerd soccer mine here has is the, has designed and developed a portable solar powered battery charger that acts like a battery storage charger and charged by either the sun or the outlet power for your mobile devices so and we can let uh, David talk more about that anyway, anyway good morning David thanks for joining us here on nerd soccer Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. So. So. I. I. You know. Is there anything else you want to talk? Uh, discuss about yourself uh, with the nurse soccer audience. I noticed your tag there says "Be Like Water" and your middle name is Vibe. I love it. Yeah. So, um, David Hunt. I'm a Southern boy from North Carolina. Um, yeah. The reason that says "Be Like Water" that's my mantra. I'm sure a lot of people know it from Bruce Lee, where he talks about just be like water and with adaptability throughout life and things of that nature and very much the same and I mean I think Spore lives into that a lot you know we are very much a, a very like agile and nimble company and trying to go everywhere contributing value the same as right. it does. Uh, Vibe, oh I'm sorry that's actually not my middle name I just love to Vibe my middle name is Virgil um, for those who watched Static Shock when they were younger that was his like first name but I just love vibing. Vibing is when you just, you just, just being man and just embracing the presence. No, I, 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 I think uh, that's probably what, uh, you know, Jason talked about this last time, that when you guys entered the competition at Drexel. So, so you know, uh, if you want to recap this, everyone, that uh, both David and Jason are from Drexel University, a really, uh, I, you know, I feel famous uh, university on the East Coast. Um, I, I knew a lot of Drexel from engineering stuff since I was in engineering, but uh, they're business majors, and that, this is the kind of the beauty of it all. Actually, they're business majors, and they they put something together by f assembling a team of people. So anyway, uh, <laughs> that's good. Uh, well, let's, let's get into this. Let's talk about you know, let, let's talk about what you specifically learned about your product and any adjustments you made from the Kickstarter campaign. Where to start? I mean, you learn so much from Kickstarter. Um, and and I'll go I'll go general stuff first and then product stuff second. So general okay. stuff, like manage the comments and manage the interactions with people in the messages. I think uh, Jay and I we thought each other were handling certain questions, so we would see it come through like oh Dave's got that or oh Jay's got that, and then we would like come and meet the next morning like yo oh shoot we didn't have that. So like we had to like get back on it and respond to people because you never want you never want people waiting uh, because that may Encourage them to go to another project or just cancel cancel their pledge. Hey David, uh, hey, I got a question for you. How, how many comments were you guys getting per day? Man, <laughs> I don't know. Like if I had to average it out, it was a it was probably about fifty to sixty comments per day. What? On inboxes. Um, the comments were a little lighter. So comments we probably averaged about twelve. But what the backers don't see on the public side is we get messages. And messages like, hey, promote on this side. Hey, give us $50 and we'll promote you on our side. Or, hey, I'd love to tweet you out. Or, hey, you guys are awesome. Or, you know, and just constant back and forth on, on, on that. So there were people actually, um, like, pitching you, hey, I could help your campaign or, you know, I could help you a little bit more? Yeah, definitely. So it, it's – and they, actually people even trying to steal the product, too. It was kind of crazy. So What? Yeah. It I'll, good. I'll tell you about that. So – um, the people who would, like, it was small little companies um, that would, not small little companies, but companies that would come in and they're just trying to get their feet on the ground and they would say, hey, like, we'll push you out through social media, but, like, give us 280 bucks or, or give us 50 bucks and we'll tap you into all of our networks. Um, and then on the, the steel side, like, I had, um, which is weird, a person from, 
it was an obscure, not obscure, but a place in, in China where they said, hey, can you send me all the details on your product? We want to promote it. And the language was a little weird, and it, it felt a little weird because all of our specs were, were right there on the on the front page, and it, it didn't seem like, uh, it didn't seem very convincing with um, their media publications and where they pushed it out through. Oh, you know, you know, let's talk about China real quick because I, I actually go on to Kickstarter to look for interesting campaigns as well. And, um, you know, you guys had contacted me directly, but but um, I, I looked at this one really interesting campaign. Uh, you know, not similar to your product, but, you know, something like it. And, uh, it, you know, they put a shell in front of it where they had two guys in New York, they were saying. And then finally when I contacted them through email, just like just like what you were just talking about there, um, a guy contacted me from China, and huh. said, "Oh, you know, um, that that yeah, you know, those guys in New York aren't with us anymore. We reconsolidated in China, so it felt really totally weird, man. Yeah. Like like what you're saying. That's crazy. So so going into it, <clears throat> and this isn't indicative of China. This is indicative of multiple places around the world. But going into it, they said that we would most likely get messages from people who were trying to take the product because they say in different countries throughout the world they scour Kickstarter and crowdfunding sites to figure out what's the latest and greatest product so they can go ahead and produce it faster and get it out to the market. So that that happens with I mean multiple countries around the world and people scour. Wow. It's just a risk you take, you know. Oh well, yeah, because it's all out there in a way, right? I mean, obviously they don't have the intellectual property of how it's exactly made, but the concept is there, right? Right. Wow. So anyway, yeah, so you talked about the experience a little bit. Anything else about the experience you wanted to share with the audience? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> on the product side, it's it's really just important that you know your product in and out, you know, side to side, back to front. And then I know that sounds <clears throat> intuitive, but people are going to question you on the implications of the future of the technology, the implications of what is it now? Are you going to build it out into a, a larger ecosystem? What's after Kickstarter? What are your specifics on getting this into the hands of the people? And you really got to know the ins and outs of your products and also your production and distribution plan. Um, a few other notes just on the Kickstarter. Um, plan your content well ahead of time. You know, one of the challenges that we faced was we would we would be planning on a Saturday or Sunday for the, for the week when we should have planned our content at least like a base level of information well before we launched the campaign. So it's good to get your your networks in place, whether they be through social media and actually build genuine relationships with with bloggers and media networks and things of that nature, um, and actually plan the content. What are your updates going to be, and when are they coming out? What do you need to tell people, and plan that stuff out well ahead of time. Also. No, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. Also, like, really hone in on your target market. So the first two weeks, we were pushing out messaging to get us covered in tech blogs and tech news and, and things of that nature, and we completely missed out on the ecological, eco-consciousness type of blogs and media. And then when we finally started pushing messaging to them, they were re very receptive as well. <clears throat> so it just kind of showed that we need to understand that this product has... Uh, a diverse array of implications and value propositions for different markets, and we really needed to hone in on that. Well, you know, you guys did a really good. I'm I'm looking for your video here, but uh, the, uh, you maybe you could play it on your end. But I, you know, I thought the video was really really good. <laughs> I actually embedded it on the site. Um, if you guys go back to our uh, previous uh, interview of uh, of his partner Jason, I actually embedded that video, and I thought it was a really good video. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. How did you guys? That was really good, actually. I, I thought it was like engaging. I, I mean, it was actually kind of funny, actually, in a way. So, thanks, thank you so much. I mean, we love the video, but the kudos and the credit go to this group that's actually out of Drexel who um, launched a video company as their senior like exit project. And, oh, okay. yeah, they're, they're called Five Five Collective, and they do great work. They do great work. So we got connected with them, ended up shooting the video across, I think, about two days. And oh, wait, I have the video right here, actually. It ended up shooting the video out across two days, um, and they just, I mean, brought out the the steady cam. Yeah, really. Let, let me share. Let me share this. You could talk over it. Actually, I, I I think this is pretty cool. Actually, so let me let me play this video for you guys because I think it's pretty neat. Actually, introducing a 
product so revolutionary, so powerful. It's unlike anything you've ever seen. Cut, 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 cut. Look, oh, this is Sport. Sport is a USB battery charger that passively recharges itself from the sun. It's portable electricity. We took four simple components, put them together in one solid product, so you never have to go without power for your mobile devices ever again. This is our way of putting the power of the sun in your pocket. We're trying to make energy more accessible, more affordable, and spread power across the world. Here's how. Inside each spore is a 5200 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. That's huge. That's like three and a half full iPhone charges. On top of that, we have a 0.5 watt monocrystalline solar panel that'll keep your battery charged. So you can charge it by the sun or by indoor lighting. And at one amp, it might not be as quick as a wall outlet, but you can hook them up in parallel with other units, creating a larger system. We call it daisy chaining. It has two in ports, so you can charge it by the outlet or by your computer, and two out ports, so you can charge two devices at once, like an iPhone or a Samsung. Or your iPad and your Nexus. Like your Bluetooth headset. Or your GoPro. Or your Arduino and your Arduino projects. Or your beeper. You, you're still using beepers? What? Bro, I'm bringing beepers back. And for all you makers out there, we designed Sports Shell to be 3D printable, which is simple, customizable, and you can make out of almost any material that you want. Design it yourself, why not? And why not make it simple? So we're gonna be upfront and honest about the components we put inside your product. This product should be open and understandable. We intend to carry this throughout our entire product ecosystem. An ecosystem of spores, solar panels, and cables that all work together seamlessly. We've designed spores so that it can daisy chain. One spore can be connected with another, and another, ultimately increasing the capacity of the system and your ability to harness that power. We're also designing larger solar panels that can be connected directly with your device, or you can plug daisy chain spores into it, creating a small scale solar energy grid, which we think is kind of cool. And all of this is connected with our fabric cables, which add a little funk to your charge, and our gooseneck cables, which you can adapt your charge. Our cables can be shaped the way you want to give you the flexibility that you deserve. We've also designed them with the unique USB latching feature, so you don't have to worry about it falling off your bike or when you do other crazy awesome stuff. Building a spore is simple. We start with easy to source batteries and solar panels, and our team of engineers has designed a circuit board that's not just efficient, but it's easy to assemble. What this means is spore can be built anywhere where there are components. So if we can get components there, we can get power there. Spore is an adaptable and scalable system. This is exactly what the world needs. When we first created spore, we just wanted something to help us charge our phones. But we quickly realized it could be a lot more than that. We realized that in the US, sometimes you just don't want to be stuck to an outlet. Whereas in other parts of the world, sometimes people don't even have an outlet to be stuck to. But one thing we all have is the sun, and now we have a way to harness it. With Spore, we're challenging the way we generate some of the world's energy. And challenging the way that we design and build products. And that's why we're reaching out to Kickstarter's community. Because it's filled with people that want to create something new and change the world. But to be honest, we can't do it alone. And that's why we're reaching out to you. Because we need your help to back our project and support our vision of making clean energy a little more accessible and a little more portable and a little more affordable for everyone. So please, Kickstarter, help us spread the power. Thank you. Thank you. That was cool. So yeah. anyway. Yeah. So yeah, let's go back to you know you're talking about the product a little bit earlier. I I just had to get into that video because I really liked the video. But uh, you know, um, you, you know, you talked to some Chinese people. Um, but you know, you you really kind of now you're you're in the post phase, right? You're you're right. You're, you're funded. Um, and uh, you know, how long is it going to take to for you to get product out to people? So we're looking the earliest to get it uh, to everyone in December, right? Uh, January is kind of the, the plan we had lined up, um, but right now it's really about uh, the production plan is actually getting out to Shenzhen, uh, solidifying all of the component manufacturers, and then shipping those out and having the products assembled. Uh, so that's really been the high priority on our plate uh, recently, is getting our, our trip in uh, Shenzhen, or Jason's trip in Shenzhen uh, actually mapped out. We have a lot of contacts down there that are pretty solid and that we've been working with. So, I mean, that's the exciting time. And, you know, um, I'm just excited. Look, it's nothing like having a physical product in your hand and, and to see what it can do. And right. Jason aligns with that. I align with that. So 
we are hustling our gluteus maximus off to like get this to people you know because they want it they've shown that they want it people in israel people in australia and china and vietnam they want spore and we are trying to bring that to them right now we are bringing that to them right now so as far as the production is lined up people can expect december people can expect december um uh, I'm thinking with with any leeway, it might it might be January, you know. But I, you don't want to overpromise anything. You know, that's a that's a good uh, that's a good uh, that's that's another question I had is that you know where were you getting most of your traction, U.S. or was it really kind of spread around the world evenly? Yeah, so most of the traction was from the U.S. It was just interesting to see people <clears throat> in Japan or Australia or Latin America or Canada say, hey, like, we heard about you through this angle and we want this product, you know? Yeah, no, that's really cool. Um, you know, you know, you, you mentioned you mentioned a little bit about, you know, the Kickstarter and, and, and the product. Now, did, did you guys tweak the product along the way um, because of comments or questions that uh, people were, or your backers were asking you about? Uh, not, not directly because of comments uh, or things that the backers were talking about. Because a lot of the things the backers talked about were things that we were already in the process of. So when we filmed the video, we noted that it wouldn't charge like as quick as a wall outlet. It was about one amp, but like our circuit ba circuit board refabrication bumped that up to two amps. So it's closer wow. to the wall outlet, you know. And that happened during the Kickstarter process. Um, a, a few things on like the shell design to make it a little like sleeker and uh, so and, and more durable for people. And then that that actually came out of the comments. You know, people were like, "Hey, what happens if I drop this? What happens if I keep it out in the sun too long?" And we're like, "You know what? Like, we got to beef the body up a little bit and things of that nature." So there there were some comments that we had that we were already trying to live into, and then there were a few that we had that we were like, "You know what? Like, great idea. Thank you for that." You know, one interesting comment that Jason made last week when I was interviewing him was um, that it actually could be localized, which means that, um, you know, with the invent of 3D printing and everything else, you could actually um, build this locally in, in, in your market that you want to serve, right? Yeah, no, definitely. So I think that's the beautiful part about it. You know, we brand giving power to the people. The best way to do that is to actually give them the power to assemble it and distribute it there. So if you think about like how the assembly that Jason was talking about, all you need to do is have the components shipped to you, right? The shell, the circuit board, the battery, um, the solar panel, and, and ship those to wherever people need it. So if it's here in Philadelphia, we'll take it to our warehouse and we'll put those components together and hire mm -hmm. local labor to actually put those together and assemble them and distribute them. If it's in sub-Saharan Africa or Latin America or, or Asia, ship those components, enable other people to put those together. Now you're fostering economic well-being there. Now you're fostering people who can actually have a job there and actually do something, assembling this product and getting it out to people. You know, and that and that cuts out a lot of a lot of the fat associated with just having some product that was manufactured here and shipped here, just treating all your customers as the same people. No. No, ship them the components that they want and let them assemble that and then get that power out to people the way that they deem is proper. That's a great concept. I mean, I, I, man, I, that, that is great. I, I think, I think you, you hit it right. The nail on the head is just that, you know, the, problem, the is, issue with sustainability isn't bringing cheap products into uh, third world nations. It's actually having third world nations assemble and manufacture something so they can sustain themselves, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, so many people want to deliver products to the third world because they see an opportunity there. But you're right. It's, it's not about that. It's about like getting something valuable there, but valuable that can like sustain itself as well. And now you're allowing people to be a part of that process as opposed to just the result of a process. You know, one thing I did get into with Jason last time, uh, and I wanted to ask you, you guys had actually won uh, a, com a, a couple competitions or a competition at Drexel, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we have an institute here called the Biata Institute for Entrepreneurship, and they host business plan competitions and uh, business like incubator competitions. Now, the, the institute has an incubator, and that's what we went into, which was basically a pretty long process of... Uh, 
build out a business plan, and then come pitch your business in front of judges and a larger audience within Philadelphia. And we ended up taking first prize for that, which landed us $10,000 in incubator space for a year. So we've been working out of that. I mean, it's been great. It's, it's awesome to be surrounded by other entrepreneurs, whether they be software or hardware or even like in environmentalism, you know, things of that nature. And that was, that was great. Uh, yeah, when and that was great. Uh, so this was lo this incubator was located on campus or in Philadelphia somewhere? Yeah, so um, Drexel just put up a new business building, um, the Jerry C. LeBeau Hall, and the incubator is located literally in there. And all the other classes are I'm in this building right now, so our classes are in here. So literally it was like we would come in and go to class, but then go upstairs to our office and then go back downstairs, go upstairs to our office. The biggest issue is like <laughs> Jay and I are – I would – People consider us a little like eccentric, so like the first time like it was up, like we would fall asleep in there and stuff like that. And someone came through and was like, "Hey, you guys can't sleep in here." And we were kind of like, "Oh, well, we work here, so like I'm pretty sure you can sleep in your office." But uh, it was just, it was just kind of funny and just a little like funny note at that time. No, you know, you know, it's funny. I I, I see the same thing here in co-working spaces. I mean, people are up and you know, like a lot of the developers on the IT side, software side, you know, they're trying to get through a problem and they just fall asleep at their keyboard, you know, and then you know they finally wake up and they get a cup of coffee and they're ready to go again, you know. So, Definitely. I think I think what you describe is exactly what a what, what a startup goes through, man. Wow. Well, anyway, I I you know, is there you know oh, another question I had is can they still get can people still get a hold of the product even though you're not on Kickstarter? Yeah, so what we plan to do in the, in about a month or so is uh, launch an e-commerce site, which will basically be uh, about pre-sales, right? So it'll we'll continue to stack, um, throwing in the gooseneck cables and the spores that people can continue to buy into right now, which we'll have them so we can have them for the uh, production launch uh, when we get it, when we get the Kickstarter backers their product. Wow, that's good because uh, you know, you know, I, I I remember from Jason's interview, I and I was interested in it. I, I just got lazy over the weekend, and so on Monday I tried to get in. I said, ah, oh, it's closed five hours ago. Oh man, so I was really excited about trying to get one actually. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to talk about that offline or something like that. But anyway, uh, so anyway, uh, uh, you know, uh, why don't you tell everyone how to, you know, get some information about uh, your product and, um, you know, go to your webpage and, you know, contact information. Yeah, so um, if anyone wants any information, it's sporechargers.com, which is S-P-O-R, no E, so sporechargers.com. You can email us. I mean, I'll just put my email out there, david at sporechargers.com. Uh, the website has plenty of information. If you want to keep track of us on social media, Facebook, we're always posting. You can find out specs about the product, what we're trying to do in terms of making clean energy more accessible and affordable for the world. We're always on Twitter. Um, and we just try to keep it fun, you know. So even if you want to just have a conversation and, and call us up and chat, like we're, we're down. We're down to talk about energy. We're down to talk about how game changers are changing the world. If you want to talk about Elon Musk, we'll talk about Elon Musk, you know, things of that nature. Um, but, but anything, anything all for humanity and all for, for the promotion of the greater good, we're, we're down with communicating about. Um, so, yeah, I mean. Wow. We're going we're gonna to have to do this more often, David. This is pretty fun, man. Absolutely. <laughs> we, got area, man. we definitely got to like, ride some electric bikes or, or just, just go vibe for a second. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Okay, well, anyway, we'll close off the interview. So that was Jason Brown uh, of Spore, uh, keeping energy accessible through clean energy, actually. So anyway, thanks for joining us, everyone. This is Greg Laurie, a.k.a. Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nerdstalker Media Network, where we believe in tech, startups, design, and you. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and be careful if they're, hey, hey, thanks, David, and thanks for the great interview from live from Philadelphia. Hey, awesome, man. All right.